Hello guys, how are you today? I hope you're having a great day so far. And I'm here for one more lesson at Seda College Online. So today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic that usually most people have positive feel feelings about and that's sleep. So my question is how sleepy do you feel today? I hope you are not feeling very sleepy and you are really paying attention and are lively during the lesson. And in order to introduce you to the topic, I have 10 interesting facts about sleep. Let's take a look at number one together. Babies steal 1,055 hours from their parents. According to data from Medical Daily, new parents lose an average of 44 days of sleep per year from their beautiful, sleepless newborns. And let's go to number two. Humans can sleep with their eyes open. Yes, you can sleep with your eyes open, which makes it truly impossible to tell whether someone is really sleeping or not. Personally, I know someone who, and I have seen actually this person sleeping with their eyes open, so I know it's true. Tell me if you have similar experiences of me, or maybe if you do it. Number three, altitude disrupts sleep. Due to lower amounts of oxygen at altitudes of 13,200 feet or higher, it's much harder to get your shoes on. Be careful next time you're visiting the Rocky Mountains. So if you're hiking or you enjoy uh, visiting mountains at high altitude, you might have this problem. Number four, some people dream in black and white. What is very interesting uh, about this fact is that now 12% of people dream in black and white, but this number was 75% before color televisions came into the home. It is really surprising to uh, understand how much technology affects your brain. And humans are the only mammal that can delay sleep. Dogs, cows and even sheep must go to sleep when their body tells them to. We have the ability to tell our body no to exertion to an extent and finish watching Stranger Things on Netflix, maybe. So, um, yeah, we have that ability, but uh, I wouldn't use it so much. These were the first five facts. Tell me, is something um, that you think is really interesting, maybe something that you find strange? something that you have experienced. And let's go to number six. 11 days is the record for the longest period without sleep. In 1964, Randy Gardner fought exhaustion and suffered extreme sleep deprivation after his feet. We definitely don't recommend trying this, like a Chinese man who died in 2012 from staying awake 11 days to watch soccer. Number seven, it's common for the deaf to sign in their sleep. Just like talking in your sleep, the hearing impaired communicate via sign language while sleeping. There are many recorded instances of people who have reported seeing their deaf partner or child signing while snoozing. Number eight, you can't sneeze while sleeping. Humans are more prone to sneezing while asleep, but since we aren't moving to stir up dust particles, the reaction doesn't occur. Number nine, the strangers in your dreams aren't strangers. You might know them personally, but you've seen them, you've seen everyone in your dreams before. Crazy, right? The brain can't create people, so it uses registered faces. And number 10, you grow 0.3 inches while sleeping, but the growth is temporary as you shrink back to normal after you're awake for a few hours. So tell me guys, which of these um, facts did you like the most? 
for me, um, number seven was really interesting because I had never heard it before. And I really liked uh, number nine as well. I've never thought about that. It's really interesting to think about it. So remember to write your opinion in the comments and tell me how do you feel. If you have another interesting fact that you want to share with us, you can also write in the comments or the live chat. And let's continue with some vocabulary about sleep. So I have a set of words here for you. Uh, I want you to take a good look and tell me if you have ever seen them before. If you don't know a word, write it in the comments for me. I'll pronounce them once. Tuve, insomnia, fiesta, oversleep, sleepwalker, snore, sleep like a log, lucid dream, a recurring dream, nap, and nightmare. So, and if you remember uh, one of the last classes that we had about the foreign words in English language, duvet and siesta are an example. Siesta comes from Spanish, duvet comes from French, okay? So, is there something that you don't know? Write in the comments. I will not give you the meanings right now. Um, we will do that together in the next exercise to give you a chance to figure out it on your own. The only hint I'm going to give you is about the idiom sleep like a log. What is a log? A log is a piece of wood. You can use it maybe to start fire in your fireplace. So what do you think it means to sleep like a log? Um, if you're still not sure, I have this exercise for you. You can match the definitions to the correct word. Take a few minutes and do that. And while you're doing, I will focus a bit more on pronunciation. Okay? We have siesta and nap. The exact same meaning. Yawn. We have a g like in yet. And a long o. Yawn. Snore. Insomnia, sleep like a log, sleepwalker, lucid dream, nightmare, so you have some air, mare, nightmare, recurring dream, oversleep, duvet. The T here is silent, like ballet, okay, duvet. Uh, and I will give you a few more seconds to look through the words and write your answers in the comments, like 1A, A, 2B, etc. Okay? So, um, something that uh, I will um, comment on briefly, because we'll see it next, is number 5, sleep like a log. If you focus on the rhythm, how I say it, you will see the linking, how the words link between them, how the consonant sound links with the vowel sound. For example, like, k is a consonant, a is a vowel, so we pronounce it like a, you connect it, and then a is a vowel, l in a log is a consonant, so we connect them as well, like a log. So you see how this becomes kind of one word, like a log. Now, I think you've had uh, time to do your matching, and let's see the answers together. Siesta or nap is a short sleep during the day. Yawn is when you inhale and exhale air through your mouth. Like that. Snore. It means to make loud noises when you sleep. Insomnia. Uh, the state of not being able to sleep. Sleep like a log means to sleep heavily. I'm very curious here. I want you to tell me if you have the same or maybe a similar idiom in your language. In Greek, we have the exact same idiom, for example. Write in the comments, please. Sleepwalker, number six. Somebody who walks uh, unconsciously. Lucid dream is... Um, a dream where you are aware you're dreaming in I. Okay. Nightmare, number eight. Unpleasant and frightening dream. Recurring dream is something that you see again and again. 
or sleep, of course, to sleep more than you should, and duvet is a type of blanket. Now, if you have any questions about that, you can let me know, okay? And let's continue. I want to give you some practice uh, with some of the vocabulary, and I want you to write. I want you to write sentences uh, for my questions. I have six questions. I will read them for you, and you can start writing. Don't just tell me no or yes. I want you to give me fuller sentences so you can use more vocabulary and you can uh, make more complete structures. The questions are, do you usually take naps during the day? Do you snore or know, so or know anyone who snores loudly? Have you ever suffered from insomnia? Have you ever had a lucid dream? Do you have any recurring dreams? How do you feel? when you oversleep. So take a few minutes and answer these questions, right? You use as much vocabulary from uh, what you learn as you can and complete sentences, please, all right? Generally, that's a good way to practice vocabulary. When you see a new word, try to answer a question uh, that is related to the word, where you have to use the word. In that sense, you will see it in context, and when you use it personally, in your own personal uh, life experience, it will be easier to remember as well, because you will have connected it to a personal moment in your life. And in order to give you some extra time to write, because I know that it might take you a little bit longer, I will answer the questions for you orally as well. So for number one, I used to take naps when I was younger, uh, but now uh, I'm, I'm not really used to, to doing that anymore. Um, maybe um, uh, at a weekend? No. Do you snore or know anyone who snores loudly? Yes, I know many people who snore loudly, but I don't snore, thankfully. Um, number three, I have never suffered from insomnia, and that's very good because I really love sleep. Have you ever had a lucid dream? Yes, I can't remember the exact um, theme of the dream, but I remember that I was aware I was in a dream. And I was also able to kind of control uh, what would happen uh, later in the dream. Number five, uh, yes, I, ha I have had many types of recurring dreams. But the one, the latest one, was uh, me being at a beach and a tsunami coming towards me. Um, and you can also tell me the theme of your recurring dreams here, because I've seen that many people have the same recurring dreams. It's very interesting. How do you feel when you oversleep? I usually feel more tired than before, and probably I will not be able to function probably for the whole day. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to read your answers. Keep writing your answers as well in the comments, okay, guys? And let's continue to focus a little bit more on vocabulary. I have a word formation exercise, word families, if you want, which means we want the verb, noun, adjective, and adverb of the same family. I have two words for you to practice and see what you can think. I want you to find to find the noun or the noun person, the adjective and the adverb that come from the verb dream and the verb sleep. So I'll give you a few moments to think about that. Write your answers in the comments, okay? Tell me dream and then give me noun, adjective, adverb. Just a comment is that there might be multiple answers, multiple nouns, adjectives, or adverbs. 
You can write one of them or you can write all of them or as many as you can think. But generally, if you know the core, the basic nouns, adjectives and adverbs, this will help you um, be more fluent. Of course, if you can remember more, that's much better, but this is up to you. So, let's take a look. Uh, what are the answers? You see that we have a lot actually here, okay? So, we have um, the noun that comes from dream is dream again. And the person is a dreamer. The adjective is dreamy. Dreamy means that something is really perfect like it has come out of a dream and dreamless of course without any dreams so you can see that we have the suffix less here to make it negative and from dreamy we get the adverb dreamily from dreamless we get the adverb dreamlessly okay i sleep dreamlessly and for the next one, sleep, we have the same noun, sleeper, the person, sleepiness, the feeling of uh, being sleepy, and sleeplessness, when you cannot sleep, the feeling of not being able to sleep, sleeplessness. Uh, as to adjectives, we have Sleepy, asleep, and sleepless. From sleepy, we get the other verb sleepily. And from sleepless, we get the other verb sleeplessly. So I just want you to take a good look here. Okay. And uh, as I said before, it's a good idea for you to go online, find the word families. Uh, I have a tip for you. There is a dictionary that usually gives you the word families on top. If you, uh, if you type one word, it is the Longman Dictionary, L-O-N-G-M-A-N, Longman. And you can usually see the whole word family. Uh, don't feel uh, stressed if you see a lot of words. Because as I said, usually uh, some of them are rare. So we don't use them a lot. Focus on the ones that are used more, more commonly at least. And um, this can help you a lot in the long run with your speaking and your writing, okay? And what we're going to do next is focus a little bit, as I said before, on pronunciation and specifically on sentence stress and linking. Our task is, I'm going to read three sentences for you and I'm going and I want you to count or try to count how many words you can listen clearly. So I don't want you to tell me how exactly how many words my sentence has, but how many words you can listen clearly, okay? So I will read my sentences uh, a few times for you. Just give me a number, okay? Number one, I can hear four words. Number two, I can hear five words, etc. Okay? So let's see. I'm used to sleeping eight hours a day. Read a couple more times. I'm used to sleeping eight hours a day. And one last time. I'm used to sleeping eight hours a day. So go in the comments and tell me how many words do you think you heard clearly. And I will show you the sentences in a moment. Number two. 
When I'm tired, I sleep like a log. When I'm tired, I sleep like a log. One last time. When I'm tired, I sleep like a log. So focus on that as well. Tell me how many words do you think you hear. And let's go to our third and final sentence. I can never remember my dream in the morning. I can never remember my dream in the morning. Last time, I can never remember my dream in the morning. And as I said, don't count all the words, count the words that uh, you listen to clearly, that you're sure are there. Okay, that's our point. We want to see which words are stressed. So you can see the sentences now. Usually most students tell me that I heard four or five words clearly, and that's correct. The sentence, the full sentence, like you see here, might have more words. In that case, all the sentences have nine words, but we only hear a few. Can you guess or can you write in the comments which of the words we listen clearly? In number one, for example. Do I hear clearly I used sleeping eight hours a day? Tell me. And you can do this for all three sentences. Number one, write the specific words that you can you think are stressed. Number two, write again the specific words that you think are stressed. Okay, before I actually show you which are the stressed words. Okay, so let's see the answers. These are the words that are stressed. Used sleeping eight day, tired sleep log, never remember dreams morning. So why do we stress these words and not the rest of them? What is so special about these words? Um, so the special thing is that these words convey important information. I'm is not really important for your meaning, but sleeping is. Uh, can is not important, but remember is. And in number three, for example, never is also important because the negative changes the whole meaning of the sentence, so it's important for you to stress it. And um, these words, if you pay attention, are verbs, nouns, or adjectives mostly, because these are the words that convey meaning. Now, other words like articles are not really important, so we don't stress them. Take a look at the first sentence. We have, I'm used to. Uh, can you see how used to link together and become used to? Used to. I'm used to sleeping. And we can see some nice linking here with the G and the E. Sleeping eight. Sleeping eight. Then we have hours. A, uh, hours, and a, uh, day, a day. So this would be hours today. See, it becomes like one word, hours today. Sleeping eight hours today. Sleeping eight hours today. And you see how it becomes more rhythmic. Sleeping eight hours today. 
Let's try that together. I want you to pronounce it like one word. Sleeping eight. Sleeping eight. Hours a day. Hours a day. Sleeping eight hours a day. I'm used to sleeping eight hours a day. So this is important for you to notice and practice, but not because you should uh, speak like that. It's really uh, useful for you to understand native speakers who might speak like that. And it can make you feel more comfortable when you don't get all the words because you're not supposed to get all the words. That's the point. We stress what you want you to hear. Then in number two, we have when I'm tired, I sleep like a log. Tired, sleep, and log are your important words. Uh, as we mentioned uh, during the vocabulary, you can see some linking as well. Like a, a log, like a log, like a log, sleep like a log, I sleep like a log. And in the last one, we have never remember dreams and morning, okay? I can never remember my dreams in the morning. Um, here, you can see maybe dreams in becomes dreams in, okay? Dreams in the morning. And many words like my and the uh, become weaker, so we don't say my, maybe we say my, my dreams, my dreams, my dreams, okay. and we wouldn't say the morning, but the morning, in the morning, I can never remember my dreams in the morning, so these are a few nice exercises for you to practice, and I really hope you enjoyed it, guys. Uh, so this was the end for our lesson of our lesson for today. Let's see what we saw. Uh, a little bit of reading about interesting facts about sleep. Vocabulary on the same topic. Some pronunciation on sentence stress and linking. And of course, you wrote sentences about your sleeping habits. So tell me in the comments, what did you learn today? What was the most interesting that you learned? And I'm really, really um, glad to have been here with, with you. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm waiting to see you here for our next class. Bye, guys, and I'll see you next time.